Modelling by New Zealand researchers shows how the country is buying time in the fight against COVID-19. But there's no certainty that the four-week lockdown will be enough. Researchers say that left unchecked, the virus would infect 89% of the population and up to 80,000 people would die. The good news is, with the current strict measures, fatalities would drop considerably. But that scenario requires the restrictions to be in place for some time. University of Auckland's Professor Sean Hendy is one of the modellers and he joins me now. Good evening. Those are pretty grim figures. So tell us what difference the current measures make to that modelling. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the important thing about that modelling is, is we really, we, we did a lot of that work um, before New Zealand took these, these very strict measures. Um, so we were... We were looking at, at really what would happen if we didn't, um, and as you said, you know those those figures are pretty grim if we didn't take any action. Um, but we we have taken some some very strong controls, and we actually think that that gives us a pretty good chance of getting on top of things. One thing that's that's not in our modelling um, is, and, and this is something we'll be working on in the next couple of weeks, is the effect of things like contact tracing um, and testing. Um, we, we've yet to model that. Uh, and, and that actually gives us a pretty good chance of reducing the, the length of time we'll have to be in that lockdown. Um, but we're going to have to watch those case numbers. So really our argument is that provided we're very clearly getting um, on top of the, the number of case numbers, but especially the community transmission, um, that'll, be a, that'll be a signal as to whether we can relax the current uh, alert level four. OK, a number of things in there. So doing what we're doing now, what are you modelling for fatality rates? Yeah, so so actually, it, it, it would be very low. Like, um, if we if we kept this up, um, we could keep the uh, uh, in our model, we would keep the fatality rate to, to very small numbers. Um, like what? Uh, less than a so, hundred? But we, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, but um, and the big the big um, but is we'd have to keep that going for a long time, essentially until we've got a vaccine. Um, but as I said, we're, you know, because we've also got the contract tracing taking place and the testing taking place and the fact that we can quarantine uh, people who, who have um, COVID-19, that actually means that we're, we're, this regime should be more effective than what we've modelled. OK, so just so that I'm clear here, when you say that um, we would need to extend the time we're in a lockdown, basically, to continue the benefits of lowering the infection yeah. rate and lowering the death rate, are you talking about indefinitely, i.e. until we get a vaccine? Yeah, I mean, so, 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 so just, to be, just to be clear... Basically, what our modelling has said is what we're doing now is is the right thing, right? That if, if we kept this up indefinitely, we would actually um, keep the disease out. Um, but the fact that we've got the contact tracing going at the same time actually gives us a chance of stamping it out and being able to relax the, um, the, the measures that we've got on now. But if needs be, um, the type of strategy that we're, that we're embracing now, we can use it um, uh, into the future uh, to keep uh, deaths low. So if we are able to uh, trace 100% of contacts, then we can, well, take our foot off the accelerator in terms of the lockdown. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, no, that's, that, that's basically it. And, and it's not, we don't necessarily have to get 100%, but we have to get enough to slow the spread down sufficiently. Um, and, you know, we're working on, on exactly how efficient we have to be at that at the moment, but it, it's, it doesn't have to be at 100%. We just have to stop enough people uh, passing it on and eventually the, the disease will um, uh, die out. Um, but, yeah, that's basically it. The better we get at contact tracing, uh, the better we get at testing, uh, the shorter uh, the lockdowns are going to have to be. So and what about... We, the other thing to remember... Sorry. The other thing to remember is... If we did take the break, the breaks off, and we did have another flare up, then we could always go back um, to these lockdowns. And then the other thing is potentially we could relax them regionally. So we're also looking at regional models. What would be the effect of doing that? Um, you know, for example, uh, keeping the alert level high in Auckland, uh, and maybe restricting travel between Auckland and other parts of the country. What about another scenario? What about if we closed our borders internationally? Would that allow us to relax uh, movement within the country? So stop people coming in altogether. Yeah, I mean that, yeah that, will, that will help. Um, but, you know, by and large, we, we, we think that but at the moment um, that's less risky um, than, than the community transmission. We're really concerned about the transmission that might be taking place 
in, in parts of the country you know that we're unaware um, because that's where there's the potential for the, the exponential growth that we're seeing in Italy and the United States at the moment. Um, so yes, we need to keep these tight restrictions on at the border. You know that helps us. Um, uh, you know, reduces the number of cases we have to deal with, reduces the number of people that uh, uh, are potentially passing it on um, to other other people in the community. So those will probably need to stay in place for quite some time. Um, but you know, it's, it's really the, the it's the contact tracing and, and eliminating the community transmission that's really important. Before you go, because some of these numbers are really confronting, should we be heartened by this modelling, or should we be really worried about it? Oh, look, I, I think we should be heartened. And I think I'm really pleased that um, that the government is, is using um, good modelling and good data. Um, you know, we're one of the groups that are, that's, that's feeding and modelling to the government and we're definitely being listened to. And it, it's played a role in the, in the, in the decision making. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think we should be heartened by it. It, it shows us that we've got a viable strategy um, and, and perhaps shows the, the counterfactual of what would happen if we did nothing. Um, and I think that's always good to know because, you know, if we succeed, we're always going to be wondering, you know, did we really have to do that? And I think the modelling shows that, well, yes, we did. Really appreciate your time this evening. That is Professor Sean Hendy, and he is one of the modellers who worked on the research that tells us what would happen if New Zealand did not bring in these strict measures.